In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the flower comb ribbon ruching tools to create a piece of fabric, um, in this instance faux leather, to use as a journal cover. Basically, it's to show how you can use these uh, tools for just about anything else with fabric. The tool that I'm set that I'm going to use is garland, and I am going to use tool. 16. Okay, now each of the tools has um, two edges with designs on them to use as a master template. The first thing that you need to do is you need to work out a control. So I'm taking a piece of fabric and note the measurement of that piece of fabric, the length of it. So this one is 15 centimeters because obviously you may want to do a different size journal cover than me. So I'm going to mark around the template that I've chosen to use lining up so that I can Carry the repeat pattern along. Just make sure there. Yep. And then I'm going to gather this up start with a back stitch or two back stitches depending on your um, fabric. Now you'll notice I'm using the thread singly. Um, but that's really just for the control. I'm also not going to sit and sort of pace out um, what where the stitches are going. I'm just going to do a running stitch following the lines. But you can achieve different effects by making all of your stitches the same size and so on. Because Basically, what I want to do is I want to see how much this particular pattern gathers up. I mean, the minimum is always going to be that you need double the amount of fabric. But obviously, some of the designs are more complex. They will gather in the fabric or the ribbons um, far more. And you need to be able to work out at least an educated guess um, as to how much you need so that you're not disappointed. Personally, I'd always add on top of it anyway because I would prefer to have more of anything than less and find that my project isn't quite working the way I intended it to. I'm using a black thread here so that you can see what it is that I'm doing. And something worth noting is that when you have uh, actual corners, it's always a good idea to have the needle actually on the corner of any of the designs because that way you're uh, maintaining that actual pattern and the um, puffs and gathers that that pattern creates. You can of course cut them but that will achieve a different look. Hopefully this isn't quite as bad as watching paint dry.
It's important that you do this control with the comb that you intend to use for the final project. So, there's my design, and now I'll start gathering it up. Now, a design such as this really needs to be gathered up by starting, because it's quite complex, starting at the far end. So what I like to do is use either a needle or a stick and pull up as I go. So, I will gather in a long length. It just makes it a little bit easier for me and if you're using a stiff fabric it will also make it a lot easier to draw that in and create the um, pattern because obviously the stiff fabric does not want to will not want to gather in the same way as um, a ribbon will it needs a little bit of extra help Now at this point is where you decide how tight you want to gather it as well because obviously you get different effects depending on if you're, you've got your swirls really tight or if they're kind of loose and those sort of effects are if it's a looser gather then obviously your final piece of um, fabric is going to be spread out a little bit more so you do need to take that into account as you're working so I'm continuing to draw down you can also use your stick to manipulate some of the folds and put them into the position that you want them to be in as we get a bit further down So we'll just line that up till we're quite happy that, yeah, that's the sort of sense that we want to achieve. And then you'll measure it again. And as you can see, we've shrunk quite considerably. That's gone down to, I would always use the lesser, so to six centimeters. So that is a lot of difference. So now we have to do the maths and work it out. Basically, what you need to do is you need to take your initial, your starting length, which was 15. You need to divide it by the finished length, which is 6, and that will give you 2.5. So, for your final project, if you want your final project to be 6, you will then times that, multiply that, by 2.5. That will give you the piece of fabric size to get down to that. So you need to then work that up. Now obviously I've not taken into consideration any seam allowances so you will add that on after you do the um, actual maths for it. Now the calculation is going to be fine if you want to go straight up or straight down. Beyond that, if you want to do anything that works at any diagonals, it really is going to be guesswork. Um, but if you base the guesswork on an educated guess, you'll be all right. So this is what I'm using for the journal. It's um, an Eileen Hull journal cover. And so I want to have the ruching really just on the front. Now I could decide to just patch it and then to measure from here on the diagonal and then to take it up. But I think that I'd like to have it all one piece. So I'm going to take my piece of leather. Uh, it's faux leather. It's, it's not real leather. And I'm going to say, okay, I've got enough there that I can do 
a little bit of a seam allowance all the way around so that I can fold it round and, and figure out something different for the inside. My front cover is here, so I'm going to mark off on the back that here is the journal um, where the spine will begin, okay? And then here is the diagonals, uh, the two corners. So I've got two small marks, okay? But I'm going to need to go 2.5. Now, if I want to take this as a diagonal across, then surely my 2.5 excess has got to come at a diagonal as well, okay? So, if this is 16, I will go with... I'm going to need about 40 centimeters at an angle, okay? Now, my fabric doesn't have 40 centimeters, so, but my fabric has 30. So if I then take it the opposite way, do 30 and divide it by 2.5, that's going to give me 12. So if I decide where, at what angle, 12 is on my book cover edge, okay, that's going to take me with a little bit of a diagonal from about here. So if I move that up, keeping it on more or less the same diagonal, I know that I can sort of work to here, come all the way out, and all the way up. Okay, so you're going to need quite a bit more fabric than your actual cover. Now you could just wing it and take a piece that's bigger, gather it up and fit it onto your journal cover afterwards. That is absolutely fine. And it's also what I did with my first um, journal cover. But this one I would like to continue the wrap around. So now because I want that wrap around to go sort of right into the spine edge, I will then trace, trace, draw around the design on the reverse of the pleather. And I will go on this one all the way to the edge. Now you notice I haven't cut this large piece um, yet. And frankly, if you don't cut it, you've got more room to maneuver if you wait and cut your piece afterwards because we're going on a diagonal. As I say, if we were working on just a straight piece, it would be a lot easier. You would just use your calculation and that calculation is then excellent if you want to, for instance, decorate um, the edge of a gown, for instance. You can actually do that by using the calculation that you've worked out in a straight line. Now I'm going to go right to the edge because as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have, as I said before, more than less. Okay, and now I'm going to stitch all along this line and I'm not going to film it you saw what I did with the sample piece and I'll come back when I start actually gathering it because obviously thicker fabric you do have to gather through I am also because I'm using pleather I'm going to use waxed um, linen thread or a, you can use a waxed cotton but basically you want to use something that's that bit stronger so that you can actually pull on it. If you use uh, sewing thread, use your sewing thread double, take a really long length of sewing thread and again if you wax it, it just will help it to slip through and this is really very important particularly if you're using leather. And if you're using real leather, remember that you should use a leather needle not a sewing needle. The leather needle has a triangular point so it doesn't um, it pierces the leather in a different way so that it doesn't split. Um, but obviously, because this is faux leather, I can just use a sewing machine, uh, a regular sewing needle 
um, with this without a problem, but I'm still going to wax the thread. Right, everything is now being stitched. You'll see it better on the right side. I've also tried to be consistent in my stitching so that my pattern is a little more even. So I've worked six stitches on each of the long um, sides and three stitches on each of the short sides and I've, I've counted as I've gone. Now I haven't bothered about exactly how big each stitch is because simply by working, you know, counting them, you're pretty much going to get it nice and even. Now, I do prefer to do any of my gathering with the right side facing up, and I'll do that with ribbons. I'll, I will stitch along the line that I've marked on the wrong side and then turn it over, because obviously you want those nice puffs and pleats to form on the right side of the fabric. You don't want all the nice ones forming on the, the wrong side. So now you just have to work them through. I'll start this so that you can see what I'm doing, but again, you're not going to want to watch me gather the whole thing. But you see that I'm, I'm using the stick method again, and this is because of the nature of the fabric. It's, the fabric is very, very thick, and the pattern itself is also, you know, quite complex. It's got a lot of, of straight edges that the fabric has to turn around. So by doing it slowly and starting from the, um, literally the start end where you had the back stitch to begin your stitching, you'll be able to manipulate those folds and pleats to create your pattern and you see we're starting to actually get a nice pattern here already so I'm going to carry on doing that and then come back to you in a moment a little tip as your length of thread is getting longer you'll find that it will want to twist up on itself as you're um, drawing through, which can of course cause you some problems. So place your finger in the loop so that when you pull through it's not going to kink. Um, it'll make it a lot easier than trying to get the kink out at a later stage. So just pop one of your fingers into the loop just to hold it as you bring those threads through. Now it's all gathered and you can see just how much it has shrunk up that piece of fabric. So now all you need to do is make sure that you position it the way that you want onto your journal cover. Um, with this fabric and with leather actually, I would probably just use some PVA glue position it down where I want it. You can see my calculations have been pretty good to go from spine to corner. And then you can actually glue down. Always start with the front part, you know, your front cover. Set that how you want it. I would fold over and also fasten at the back and then place um, decorative paper or fabric on the inside to line it and then work across the remainder of your cover folding it along. I thought it'd be nice to show you as I'm, I'm actually gluing down. Um, I'm, as I say, I'm using PVA glue but what I'm doing is I'm stretching and manipulating so that the folds also work across. So that adds more interest. So that there'll be those folds as the journal sort of turns around to the back. 
so you can see that as your journal is going around you will have some of those folds all of the way around. And then all of these sides and edges can be neatly turned in and trimmed off. On your straight corners it's best to stretch and fold up both straight sides and then to add some glue and fold down the corner. When that's completely dry we can just shave off those edges and that will give you a neater finish on the back. On the ruched corners you really have to treat it pretty much however the fabric allows you to. So for instance the way that I did the folding here I can just about use the same method pulling in the corners and really pressing down in that corner. When it's dry I'll trim off all of this excess. But What you need to do is make sure that every one of these lumps and gathers are actually glued down so that if you just trim off the excess it's not going to ruin the front. And Again this one just come down because I've got quite, this is the beginning of the stitching so there's quite a lot happening here. So I'm going to glue it in that way and then when I come to trim it I'll make sure that everything is glued and that will get covered up because we'll shave off bits, just trim them as close as possible to the fabric edges. But that's why you need to stretch it as well. Now obviously if you're using um, actual fabric that's not thick like um, a faux leather, you're going to have to work this a little bit differently because you will have raw edges. But the basic principle will be the same. When everything is completely dry, I will as I say, take the scissors and trim any of the large um, folds or gathers that are coming up. I won't trim them right to the edge and I'll then press down and make sure that that's glued. And then again, when everything is completely dry, I will then add a lining, um, probably paper, but could be fabric lining. And so you can see that when you've got your cover, you then have a nice decoration across the diagonal front of the cover.